turning the ophthalmoscope on. Press the green button and rotate the shoulder to turn the light on. You can adjust the brightness by moving the dial further forwards. There is a switch at the back which will adjust the type of light beam you get. Crosshairs, slit beam, blue filter, small plane disc, medium plane disc, and large plane disc. The large plane disc is the setting you want for fundus examination. Some ophthalmoscopes also have another filter at the top, which may be a switch. This has a green filter, a bright filter, and a dim filter. When you've used the bright setting to check the red reflex, you may want to switch to the dim setting to make it more comfortable for the patient. When you turn the ophthalmoscope on, you will see the little window lighting up with a number. The dials on the side will adjust the number you can see. If you do not wear glasses, if you're going to keep your glasses on, or if you have contact lenses in, you want to set the number here at a white zero. If you have a refractive error and you know what it is, you will need to adjust the lens power in the ophthalmoscope to correct for your refraction. If you're a myope, you will set it to a red number. If you're a hypermetrope, you will set it to a green number. If one looks at a patient's face when they are wearing their spectacle correction, if they are wearing a myopic spectacle correction, the edges of the skull adjacent to the lateral canthus will appear drawn in. The opposite of this is apparent with hypermetropic spectacles, where the edges of the skull adjacent to the lateral canthus appear to bulge out when the examiner is looking at this through the patient's own spectacles. The higher the refractive error, the more noticeable the aberration. One other way is to pick up the spectacles as if you were picking them off the patient's nose and to hold them at arm's length, looking at a target through the lens, for example, the edge of a table or a window frame then move your hand horizontally in a left and right direction. If the image seen through the spectacles moves in the same direction as the hand movement, then the spectacle lens is a myopic lens. But if the image seen through the spectacle lens moves in the opposite direction to that of the hand holding the spectacles, then the lens is a hypermetropic correction. Introduce yourself to the patient and explain what you're about to do. For example, mention that it will shine a bright light into their eye. You may need to rest your hand lightly on the cheek or brow. You will need to move in very close to them for examination. Ask the patient to let you know if they feel uncomfortable or need a break. Give the patient clear instructions. Please look into the distance at that wall, at that clock on the wall. You need to examine red reflex in both eyes at the beginning and then the fundus of each eye in turn. Rules for using the ophthalmoscope. Examine the patient's right eye. Stand on the patient's right side, ophthalmoscope in your right hand to your right eye, to the patient's right eye. On the chart. And please don't look side to Check side. Check the red reflex. Video. Stand in front of the patient. From about arm's length, look through the ophthalmoscope and shine the light into each pupil. Compare one red reflex to the other. Position yourself in the horizontal plane as shown. From a position looking straight into the eye, move 15 degrees laterally outwards. This will position the optic disc in your field of view. If it is not in sharp focus, adjust the ophthalmoscope dial to correct this. Examining the patient's left All eye, right, thank you. May stand on the patient's left, left side, ophthalmoscope in your left hand to your left eye. 
This often requires a lot of practice, but you will need to demonstrate this technique. In an exam scenario, the only situation you will be permitted not to use your left eye is if you have evidence from an eye care specialist that you have left amblyopia or lazy eye and you need to be examined through the university health service. Similarly, the same applies to the right eye if you have right amblyopia. Examine the fundus. Examine the right eye first. Looking through the ophthalmoscope eyepiece, move in to look through the pupil. You need to get closer than you think. It is important to note that the examiner needs to factor in their own refractive error if they choose to remove their own distance spectacles. If the examiner is wearing contact lenses or distance spectacles, the refractor's error from the examiner side is effectively zero. Should this be the case, the only refractive error that needs to be kept in mind is that of the patient. The patient must remove their spectacles in order to allow adequate proximity and as wide a field of view as possible when looking at the patient's fundus. If the examiner has a refractive error of minus three and removes his or her distant spectacles, then a red three needs to be dialed into the ophthalmoscope. If then the patient's refractive error is also known and also happens to be minus three, then a further three needs to be factored in. In other words, the red dial needs to read six. The cumulative refractive error of examiner plus patient must be cancelled out by the appropriate lens in the ophthalmoscope for the system to be in focus. It is often the case that the patient is unaware of the strength of their spectacles. This is where it is important to get one's position right so that despite the fact that the image is blurred, if the examiner is in the right position at 15 degrees to the nose on the horizontal plane, then the view is bound to be that of the optic nerve, however blurred this may be. In this correct position, the ophthalmoscope dial is then rotated until the image becomes focused. Stability is important because instability further adds to the difficulties of focusing the ophthalmoscope. The left thumb is usually resting on the patient's brow, but may be needed to lift the upper lid to allow viewing through more of the pupil. The right hand holding the ophthalmoscope is resting on the patient's cheek. Find a blood vessel and follow it. All blood vessels lead to the optic disc. If you have followed it and not found the disc, go back in the other direction. Find the optic disc. This is nasal. Once you have found the optic disc, you need to describe three things about the disc. The three C's. Cup, colour, contour. Then examine along the arcades and macula. The area temporal to the disc is the macula. At the center of the macula is the fovea. Describe what you see. Common clinical signs would include cotton wool spots. These are pale, whitish, poorly demarcated, fluffy lesions. Or exudates. These are yellow, well demarcated lesions. Clusters of pale, creamy lesions in the center of the macula, with the rest of the retina looking entirely normal, would suggest drusen. Atrophy, laser scars. Red lesions would be suggestive of hemorrhages, dot, blot, flame-shaped hemorrhages, boat-shaped or pre-retinal hemorrhages. Abnormal vessels may be new vessels or tortuous or dilated vessels. As a novice, it is important first to distinguish normal from abnormal and then to practice and gain experience over time.